there are people that that tend to uh, tend to think that your fighting style is just not one that's that's built for long term endurance in the sport. Do you, do you agree with them? But I mean, if you look at the amount of fights you've had, yeah. you can kind of argue the other way. Yeah, there's there's an argument on both. I'm saying, I mean, they sound pretty smart when they say it like that. <laughs> I'm not a, this is a young man's game who, who stays in here for a long time. Um, you know, if you've never done this, uh, you know, I wouldn't expect you to understand, but, uh, you know, you have to, you have to look at it in a certain way. You, of course, I'm not going to be here forever. Um, you know, I've had 20 fights already. Do I want to have more than 30 fights? No, I don't. Not even if I was to win them all, I wouldn't want to have that many fights. I, uh, you're not, you know, this game isn't, this game isn't built to stay, to stay in for a long time. I, Obviously, you know you have your exceptions like uh, Randy Couture, who was in forever. But you know, I um, I have a human services degree in college. I want to work. I want to do social work. I want to make some good money in the UFC doing that. And uh, I'm not looking for just. I'm not looking to stay here forever and uh, and and you know go past my prime. I'm, the day I don't think I can be the best in the world is the day I will not do it anymore. So would you say the money is the goal right now? I mean, it's very crowded at the top of the uh, lightweight division. Things are back on the tracks. So you got Khabib and Connor coming up. Are you happy just being a guy that, that headlines cards, puts on exciting fights, or is your eye still firmly set on a title opportunity? Absolutely on the title. I wouldn't, like, again, if I didn't think I could be the best, I, I'm not going to stay here. Um, money is what we fight for. We fight for money, and we are prize fighters. Uh, there's, I, I, don't, I do not possess any other skill set where I can go out and make this much money uh, on any given night. And that that's a fact. Being a social worker, I guarantee I can't do that. So, uh, you know, I I never planned on doing this as a kid. I never planned on doing this as an adult. Uh, it's just something I kind of, uh, you know, came into with uh, pretty much because of my mental fortitude and how tough I, how tough I have become since because of wrestling. I wrestled since, you know, I wrestled for 18 years and uh, yeah, I, I'm a prize fighter now, but uh, uh, again, I'm not trying to do this forever. And I want to lead with Tony Ferguson because I don't know that people have lost sight of what he accomplished before he went away, but he won 10 consecutive fights at 155 pounds in the modern era before any man ever did that. Okay, a 10 fight winning streak in the UFC at 155 pounds, the prime division. He has been cleared to fight. He has hinted at a return at UFC 229. He said no opponent yet or something to those words, but perhaps he's there as a backup in case something were to happen to mm. Khabib Nurmagomedov or Conor McGregor. Either way, El Kukui is back in the news. And don't forget about what this man accomplished, folks, because pretty heavy stuff, and obviously he still brings that 10-fight winning streak with him uh, when he does return to the Octagon, hopefully later this year. Listen, I think what you mentioned makes a, a heck of a lot of sense, to have him on the back burner in case something happens to either Habib or Connor. Um, we can't forget what he did, absolutely. I, I agree with you. You know, you look at what he did. As impressive as Habib Nurmagomedov ha has been, obviously running undefeated uh, for so long, um, I still think the run-up, and you look at Ferguson, what is he, 9-0, something like that, in his last nine fights? 10-0. 10-0, um, and 0. 10 10 and 0, 0, sorry. 10, 10 consecutive 0. wins. Um, I think his 10 consecutive wins are more impressive than Habib's. And, and the way that he did it, this is a guy who is, um, you know, might not be mistake-free, but he goes out there and finishes fights and delivers action every single time out. So, uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see what Ferguson – uh, is going to do it seems like he's moving like he normally does and he's doing you know these psychopathic training methods i mean he's up with bouncing on a ball and juggling yeah. i don't know what the hell he's doing but his knee is apparently fine he he's back training got the clearance from the doctor i think as well so um yeah i'm excited to see tony back in action man and uh again just unlucky with what's happening <laughs> between him and habib four times they try to make that fight um it, yeah. it didn't happen and uh you know, I think that uh, whether he waits for the winner of these guys or maybe has a fight to fight uh, one of these guys, I, I think it makes sense. But I, I like your idea of having him kind of wait uh, as a possible backup. So I met Ronda Rousey. She came up to me and said, can I talk to you at, at one of the events? We went back in my room. We started talking. And... <laughs> I don't know, 20 minutes into the conversation, I said to myself, holy shit, I'm actually considering this right now. <laughs>
in 45 minutes after I walked out of that meeting and called my partner Lorenzo and I said, you're not going to believe this, but I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I, I think this is the woman to do with it, to, to do it with, and, and, and I'm going to give it a shot. And wow. Yeah. The, the women are so technical and so good that, you know, the women's fights right now outrate the men's. The, the women's really? fights, oh. Wow. wow. I, I can't, if I put on a card and there aren't women on it, people are like, how do you not have a women's fight on this card? I'm like, wow. We have three divisions for women right now. I can't put women on every single card that we have, but, yeah, it's getting there. Example of how you've done that with a fight, with a, with a particular ticket that stands out for you that maybe people didn't think was going to go, but you made it go. Well, I would say my best one was Holly Holm, Ronda Rousey, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I did a really good job with that one. <laughs> you know, that, that Ronda, you know, everybody, when that fight came out, the odds were incredibly huge that Ronda was going to win that fight, and nobody gave Holly a chance and um, said, Ronda's never fought anybody like this. You know, Holly, uh, Holly striking or head kicks or this or that. You know, and, and even, even Joe Rogan came out and said, there's no way Holly Holm wins this fight. Wow. And not only did we sell the fight, but Holly Holm did win the fight. Yeah. And it is true. Yes. You know, you, you, you can go into a fight, especially in mixed martial arts, thinking you know who's going to win. And uh, not always the case. So, Kamara, can you tell us uh, what you're getting ready for? I mean, we know, but just to tell the audience. Man, uh, right now I'm training for uh, September 8th in Dallas, Texas. That is uh, the Wolf of the Welterweight title. If, uh, if something happens to, to go wrong, and I'm not wishing this on anybody, not saying I, I, I wish somebody doesn't make it to the fight, but I'm just preparing in case somebody doesn't make it to the fight because that, that those type of things happen in the sport that sure. we're in. So if, if uh, unfortunately Darren Hill is unable to make weight or is it, unable to make it to the fight due to whatever else, then I will be stepping in and, and, and facing Tyron Woodley and vice versa. So, yeah, I, I hope those guys are healthy and are able to step in, but if they can't, essentially I am the backup plan. I'm the cleanup guy. I get to step in there and clean things up. But Kamara, and, and I would love to see you fight both of those guys or either of those guys, but if Woodley gets hurt and you step in, it would just be a main event fight between you and Till, correct? I don't know what they're calling it. I'm not, <laughs> not going to put that title on, out there. I mean, if they want to throw interim titles around, I don't mind that, you know? So it, 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 it doesn't matter. I don't know what it would be. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is I'm preparing for both guys if anything happens, but obviously preferably – if I would rather fight Woodley that night than, than Till, but it doesn't matter to me. I mean, both are, both are the big fights. Both are the fights that I, I, I want, I've been wanting. And I think those are the fights that make sense for me, either one of those fights. Sure. So Khabib Namagamadov, I guess on his Instagram, it was either his story or live or something. He was videotaping his brother or teammate. Uh, paying homeless people to do push-ups. Did you see that video at all? I did see it. Yeah, so, I mean, some people say that it's, you know, the cultural thing is different. Like, who knows what happens where he's, when he's, where he's from and they do that or something. Did he, did he do it in America? He did. It did. It looked like America. Did you say the America? <laughs> it looked like America. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost positive this is America. So... Yeah, so anyways. So he's paying him. <laughs> he's having his brother. I think it's his brother. To do push-ups? To pay, like, having homeless people oh, it do says push-ups. Oh, Khabib's not doing it. It says Khabib laughs at homeless people. Yeah, but it's Khabib's it. Instagram. Like, he's videotaping it. So that's where the, controver the controversy comes in. So? I don't have that. I mean, hmm. I mean they, they, they gave the homeless dude money. It's not like that's what we were saying, too. Like, being shitty to him. It's not like they're like, oh, look at your shitty push-ups. Maybe he was like, dude, I want you to be healthy. If you can get this money, <laughs> I, don't think it was like that, I want though. you to fucking get the blood flowing for me. You know? I don't know. I don't know. It's not the worst. Jesus Christ. People are so sensitive. People are bitches. People just <laughs> like to gossip. They want something to gossip about. Oh, look at Khabib, man. This is terrible. Look at Darren Till. This is terrible. Look at Connor. This is terrible. Shut the fuck up. Bunch of hens. Who cares?